Welcome to another episode of The Caribbean Edge. We are blessed tonight with three couples who have been married for different time periods. We have the Williams, Nicole and Sean Williams, who have been married 13 months, so they bring a different perspective to us as just newlyweds, I would say. <laughs> compared to um, the Beckfords, who have been married for 21 years. Welcome, Jason and Jessica. Thank you. And we also have the, the Williams again, <laughs> pastors, Williams, who have been married for 29, almost 30 years. So welcome to the Caribbean Edge as we talk about love and marriage, and we are getting deep tonight. So <laughs> have fun, grab your glass of wine, and remember to share this episode. So we're going to start out with um, Sean and Nicole Williams. If you could just introduce yourself and let us know anything you want us to know about you. All right. I'm Nicole. I'm 46. We're from the Boston area. And I'm 49, I'm trying to, to reach 50 in this country. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so we've been married 13 months, happily, haha, <laughs> 13 months, um, we bring, we do bring a lot of experience with us to the, to our marriage, we, this is a second marriage for both of us, so I think we've learned a lot along the way throughout life with, you know, how to, how we want to treat each other in our marriage that makes it really successful with respect and, and, and love and, and listening and a lot of you know, patience with each other. I, I feel like um, anything that can make her happy, it's fine. And, and that's, a, that's, that's something that a lot of men are, are, aren't doing. I think a lot of men are putting, a, are putting their heels, their feet down and, and saying, I can't do anymore. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Anything that can put a smile on her face, or that can make her happy. That I can have control. That I have control of uh, anything that I can do. I, I'll, I'll do. You know, it's 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 you know, all it is is just trying and retrying. That's all it is. Just keep on trying. You know, in this relationship, and and that's what we learned from all this time. I mean, we're not spring chickens here, and you know, we knew what we wanted. You know, and what it would take for us to really actually be married again, since we are. You know, previously married. Yeah, neither one of us was ever looking to ever get married again. You know, we just kind of thought, okay, if I end up happy with someone, that's great. And then we met. And, it, and I wasn't about to let her get away. <laughs> but it clicked in like a soulmate kind of way. And, and we, were, we were like, oh, you're the one. We were so similar and, and had such similar backgrounds, understood each other so intensely. Like, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I, please. Go ahead, Sean. No, I, I was just saying, like, um, I I met, the minute I met her, the minute we talked, and we talked on the phone, and we talked late into the evening hours, nightly basis, um, I was just like, this this, this, this is her. This, here she is. This is who I've been looking for this whole time. And, uh, yeah, I, I was not about to let anything get in between us. Oh, so tell us a little bit, each of you, about divorce. I know divorce is not an easy thing. And you mentioned you've been married before. Did you get married young? And what was what's different about it this time around? Well, I mean, for me, I was um, I was in the Air Force. I was stationed in Montana, and I met someone there. And uh, her and I uh, basically had an oops. And uh, I was young. I thought, well, I mean, let's do the right thing here. And we tried for nine years, we tried. And things just didn't really work out. And, uh, and we're friends. I mean, we're Facebook friends, my, my, ex, my ex and I, because honestly, I, I thank everybody who's led me up to this point. Uh, it, because it, if it didn't lead me up to this point, I wouldn't have met Nicole. 
I wouldn't be in this life that I'm in right now. Everybody was essential. Even the good, the bad, the ugly, everyone was essential for me to reach this point where I'm at right now, where I'm happiest. So I'm thankful for her. Yeah, and I also, I got married young. I was the first time, I was 19. He was in the army and being transferred and I and we were already engaged, but it just, we just kind of said, well, let's get married right away. And we moved to Colorado and, you know, we were young and we didn't know who we were. And, you know, it just very different people, very different backgrounds, not much in common. And we really kind of weren't getting along and you know, a couple of years in, you know, we had a baby on the way and did counseling and everything and kind of said, if we can't figure this out by then, we didn't want to raise our son in, in an upset home. So it was kind of, all right, <clears throat> this is going to end. And to this day, we are friends. We do talk on the phone, you know, and we are friend Facebook friends too. And, you know, and I spoken to him. Yeah. We made a productive, you know, way That's of great. raising yeah, and that's important, especially because there's a child involved as well, right? <laughs> um, but I'm with you on that, Nicole. Why raise a kid in an unhealthy environment? You yeah. know, and so many people stay married because of the kids themselves. Um, and, and I'm not a fan of that, but you find a lot of divorces happening after the kids are off to college, um, but the kids know you're miserable. But then there's mm -hmm. also a lot of studies too on the mental health of kids that have divorced parents. So how you handle that makes a difference in your kids' lives as well. So kudos to you both for you know making that work. And as we mature, I think it's, it's easier. As we find love ourselves, it's probably mm -hmm. easier too. Um, because sometimes you just outgrow the person. And, you know, I've been in love when I was younger and I'm, I'm such a different person now that if I look back at those relationships, I would never have gone with them because I'm totally different now. But that was part of my journey that I had to go through as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, so we're going to switch over. We kind of lost um, the Beckfords. But hopefully they'll rejoin us. I think they're having some technical issues. Um, but the other Williams couple, both pastors, with, from what I understand, a 15-year-old at home. Um, tell us how you met and what's kept you together for almost 30 years. Uh, well, we actually met uh, in college um, back in the 80s, late, late 80s. 80s. <laughs> <laughs> he was um, actually my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you're in a dorm, uh, the person that's in charge of the students, uh, uh, he was a resident advisor. And um, we were we were friends, and he turned out to be my best friend. And we just fell in love. And so uh, he's always been funny and silly, and but yet serious. He was he was what you would call a nerd back in college. <laughs> 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 he loved to study. Uh, he 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 loved to work also at the same time. He was just a good guy. You know how when you know you met the right one, that's what it was. That's what it was. It was, it was just meant to be instantly. And so um, we married after he graduated from college. So I was like 20 and he was 23. 23. And so we were both um, in church, uh, very faithful, committed. Uh, we both uh, had the same faith. Um, just had the same goals, you know, and I think that's always important. You want someone that's going in the same direction uh, that you're going in. And so uh, we were a young couple in our 20s, and we didn't have our first child until we were like 20. I was 26. He was just going on 30. But I do have a 25-year-old son as well, <laughs> adult son. But uh, so we were a young couple, married. Um, in, in our careers, very faithful in church and ministry, and we were just, just enjoying life and just in love, 
and having fun. <laughs> having fun. And I was told this, and it's good to talk to older people when you, before you get married, even if you are still married, because they have so much wisdom. And even though we were married at such a young age, it was good to wait to have kids. You just get a chance to enjoy yourself, get to know one another, do things together, accomplish certain goals. So that the five, six year period really helped make sure that we were grounded and ready for a family. And so, um, you know, and so, it's, but that came from being around other couples that's been through to give you a little bit good knowledge and you know and help you along the way and so that's why I appreciate such a, a call like this or a time like this because people really just need to glean from one another and, and be honest and open you know just with sharing but uh, I love this man and he, he has a different story on how he met <laughs> you know? and so but he chased out the people just to let you know <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, I mean, How did you say? <laughs> she's right. I um, the day we met at college, it was the first day of school for her. I was already in school for a year, mm -hmm. and um, we was passing out the keys for her dorm room, and I saw her across a crowded room, and she caught my eye, and I didn't even know her name. I turned to my homeboys and I told them, I said, "That is my wife." Right there, right there, that girl right there. Don't nobody talk to her but me. That's what I told them. And they were like, what's her name? I'm like, I don't know her name yet. I just know that that's my wife. Don't want to talk to her. And I didn't have a, because we didn't have cell phones back then. We had beepers. And I remember calling some of the girls I was dating or going out that night. I told them I couldn't go um, tonight because, you know, I, I just couldn't make it. I mean, you said beepers. What's a no, people, right, right. <laughs> and I remember I knocked on her door. I mean, I pursued her. I knocked on her door. And and it's funny, she called me a little boy. That's what she called me, a little boy. And I was like, little boy, what are you, you know, I'm like older than you. And she asked me, did I have a car? And did I have a job? And I said, no. <laughs> and she told me if I get a car, when I get a car and I get a job to come back and knock on her door, and the next day, <laughs> I went out and got me a job. And I and I and I, I called my dad and told my dad that uh, to get, I need a car. I didn't tell him the reason why I told him to walk home at night, but I want to get that car uh, and get that 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 job. And we've been uh, married together ever since. Um, I love this woman more than anything in this world, and I think that what has kept us together uh, is that. Um, we we celebrate each one each one of our differences. We celebrate that. Um, you know, I was just thinking before we did this call is when I'm driving home off um, I-85, uh, it excites me to know that on the other side of the door is the woman that I love is going to greet me with a kiss. I always get, you know, hey, handsome. You know, I, I always get that she wants to pinch, if you don't mind, she wants to pinch me or wants to do the little <laughs> love taps on me. And I think that's so important to keep the spark, you know, in your marriage. I mean, granted, I'm not that muscle guy I used to be back in college. And for her to still find me attractive <laughs> and still, you know, loves me and go through a lot of stuff I have put her through. I'll be honest, I'll put it out there. I, I've, I've put her through a lot of things and yet she has still remain and stay you know with me and we're so excited to be on this call tonight we minister to a lot of married couples and we just you know let them know that you know marriage can be hard sometimes but it's worth it and that you both have to put 100 percent. i don't believe in 50 percent. you do 50 percent. i believe we both have to put 100 percent in to make the marriage work and you have to be you have to be what i call uh, uh, what I call both have to be able to have to forgive one another. Cause you know, we can say some things in our marriages that can cut us and, and we have to, you know, be able to want to forgive one another. I think just forgiving one another, loving one another. Um, I don't desire any other woman, but this woman, you know, right here that, you know, holds my hand that, you know, when tell when things, when I get beat up in the world or outside my door going to work, I know when I come home, 
you know, she, if you don't mind, she treats me like a king. She loves on me. She rubs on me. And it's just a wonderful thing. I look, I don't put 30 years, almost 30 years into this. I ain't about ready to mess up now. <laughs> well, you know what I really love? Well, I love everything you said, but I like the fact that she told you you needed to go get a job in a car. <laughs> I thought she was going to ask me to pull my credit report on. That's the next I thought she was going to and your health record too. But <laughs> here's why that's important. And I think a lot of people shy away from it. And I've said on this show, I'm not dating someone that works at Burger King. I mean, you have to have certain expectations or it's not going to work out. So she told you that's important to her. And it doesn't mean that she wants you for your money or anything like that. It's just like, you need a car because how are we going to get around? You need a job because how are you going to pay for the meals? How, you have to lay a foundation with the person. So I'm just super glad that you went out and did that with her in mind. <laughs> and I love after all this time, you're still excited to get home to the person you committed yourself to. That's so beautiful. You don't hear that. that that's awesome. And I, I agree with that. And people be surprised when I say this. Like, I have a husband who comes home every night. I have a husband who has a job. I have a husband who loves his family, his kids. I mean, you can see that. He takes out time for his family, for his children. And I, I put this way, I realize I'm blessed. Cause that's not everybody's story, and so I just thank God for you know, my husband because he's a yeah, and he's heaven sent, and he's not perfect, but he's perfect for me. <laughs> oh, well, we're gonna get into some of those imperfections, by the way. <laughs> so, let's jump over to our patiently waiting, the Beckfords. Hi, Jessica and Jason. How are you? Hi, Good, thank you. how are you? Good. So, um, tell us about yourselves and how you met each other. Okay, so we met um, in college. I was going to FIU my first year in Miami. And my first day at the job, I saw Jason, my first day at my new job that he had been at for a while. And um, the first time I saw him, I felt right away deep down inside, it's like God told me this is gonna be your husband. And I argued with God for a while because um, I was at the time, what, 22? 22, he was, he's five years older than me. He was mature and, do, you know, doing his thing. And I was still in college and partying and, you know, dating those kind of guys and just not ready to settle down. And I'm like, no, no, God, you're, you're wrong. There's, there's no way. But I was curious. So I stopped dating because, you know, I didn't want him to look at me like she has all these guys coming in and out, blah, blah, blah. And I'm at work with him. So I stopped dating for a year and I just started kind of watching him at work to see what kind of guy he was, how his vibes were, how he really was. And the way he is today is exactly how he was back then. He's very calm and easygoing and, um, you know, just a great all around guy. So this went on with me watching him and him not knowing for quite a while, probably what, a year mm -hmm. or more. And my friend at work knew I liked him because I started to like him. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna have kids. Here we go. I'm not ready for this. So I'm like trying to convince myself the Lord is still wrong, right? Meanwhile, I'm having feelings for him now because I realize he's a great guy. So um, so he, one day, I'm working, I was the front desk manager and he was the one that picked up people from the airport. So one day he came in the back office um, where I was working and he was like, one day I'm just gonna hold you down and kiss you. And I was like, what? Because he never, ever, ever, ever stepped to me before. Like there was no flirting, there was no nothing. It was just, you know, just like, hey, what's up? You see each other at work and you see each other maybe at, you know, parties with mutual friends or whatever. And that was it. Mind you, you should say that we've been talking, though. Yeah, we were time. talking. We're just, yeah, we're like talking at work. No, 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 because right. we've been at work. You know, we're at work every day. Um, we're both working full time. He's working two jobs. <laughs> I'm working and going to college doing my thing. And so we're at work like five, six days a week together. So we're, we talk every day at work. And um, so one day he asked me out and... He continued to ask me out for about three weeks, and every time I, um, I said yes, and then I wouldn't answer my house phone at the time because we didn't have cell phones. 
um, I didn't answer my house phone because I knew it was him. And I'm like, Lord, I'm not ready to get married. I'm not going out with this man because I know if I go out with this man, we're going to get married. So finally, one day I was like, all right, fine. So I, I waited for him to come from work to pick up the people from the cruise ship and come back to work. And he pulled up and saw my little red tercel and he was like, I can't believe she waited for me. And he was like in shock. And then, um, so that night we had our first kiss, blah, 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 whatever. And at literally, what, not even nine months later, we are pregnant, we married a year after that. So we've been married, let's see, we got married when I was 25 and he was 30. We had our first child and we are pregnant with our second. And um, now we have six kids. We've been married for 21 years. And um, we're still here plugging away at it, ups and downs. I mean, we've been through everything and back. And we're, um, we started over. We have a two-year-old and a five-year-old. Uh, we adopted three siblings, one seven years ago and two last year. And he's like, oh, Lord, I was just getting ready to travel with you. All the big kids are grown and them soon gone. And he's like, all right, fine, let's go. We're on another adventure together. And um, so we're starting over again. We're new parents again. And, um, yeah, so we have six kids, and we live in between Orlando and Tampa. I'm a realtor, and um, I also help students that are um, trying to get into college, help them with their college apps and scholarships and all of that. So I help kids that don't have the support system at home or at school for that. And I kind of help them get into school. And so that's my, um, I think that's my gift because I love helping kids. I'm always, my heart is for kids. And um, we just always have kind of stayed united in, you know, trying to stay united in our faith and um, doing outreach together in the community involving the kids together, always everything that we do, um, trying to communicate the best we can um, I talk more than him, obviously. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but yeah, we've been together for what, 23 years? Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it happened, it happened very fast. And like I said, the Lord told me from the first day, right? This is, you see why I was scared, guys? Because I knew that was life as I knew it was partying was done. You know, I was like, okay, graduate college. Here we go, girl. And sure enough, I graduated college when I was, uh, my son was a month old. I graduated FIU with hospitality major and um we were already moved in together and here we are so <laughs> <laughs> what's your story <laughs> it's the same story i mean but, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, but the thing about it is that um really we've seen her every day every day just gets better because just just her attributes that she has she's so beautiful from inside out that he has, you know, just real compassionate, sweet, loving, caring. Um, she wants to help the whole universe, you know. Just all of these things is just so beautiful. And, you know, I get butterflies when she calls me, when I say, when I say the phone ring and, you know, I say that she's calling me, coming home when she, you know, it just, it just feels so good. And I find that more now, it's, it's, like every day I tell her, I say, you know, I'm in love with you. I'm like falling in love with you still. It's just so beautiful. Um, like, you know, it's it's kind of rough because we have so many kids and we don't really get to spend a lot of time with each other. And, and so, they're all home because of COVID. The right. college students, everybody. So our house is like packed and full of hormones right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was getting crazy. So it was to the point, you know, we didn't have that communication. So I'm like, man, this just doesn't feel good. So... Uh, it started out, I wrote, here we are, we live in the same house, and I wrote uh, an invitation to her <laughs> to take her to the park in her neighborhood. So I mailed it, and it came to her, and she saw it and said, oh, you want to go out? And I'm yeah, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's just these things that you have to do to spice up stuff. Um, in our relationship, I find that we need, we, um, we really work together. Women do a lot of stuff. Guys, you must love women because they do so much. And it's like men take them for granted. Like, you know, the amount of stuff that they do, taking care of the kids, cleaning, cook, I mean, everything. So I'm not like that. I really just jump in. I wash the dishes. I wash the clothes. I mop the floor. You know, I do everything. Be the kids, take care of them. You know, they're my kids too. They're our kids. But you have to have that mindset to kind of ease the pressure off of, off, off of her. You know, you have to do these things. 
And at the same time, you have to do things like make sure you're sending in flowers, write a note, you know, these things. It's just it's it's just things to do to keep it real spicy. Communication is huge, mm -hmm. really, really huge. Yeah. Don't keep anything in. Share it. No matter how small you might think it is, just talk it out. And it really helps, you know. And of course, you know, for sure, your faith. You definitely must have that mm -hmm. faith, you know. And, um, you know, it's, it's a work. It's a work in process. There's no book or anything to read. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there are many books out there. But it's just, it depends on the individual mm -hmm. and how you feel. And it really boils down to how you feel about her and how she feels about you. And it will work. It works. It's beautiful. I'll never give her up. I love her every day. She's just so... <laughs> Come here. I love you. That's one of the things I loved about him, too, is that when I saw that he cooks and cleaned and all of that, because I said I was never going to get with a guy <laughs> that did not share the responsibilities. I'm very independent. I was the only child for 20 years. so And I saw my mom work her butt off. And my dad worked multiple jobs and everything, but I was like, you should be in there helping mommy with the dishes. But of course I was quiet because I, you know, you don't talk back to your parents, you know, at all. So, but I was like, uh-uh, when I grow up, no, no, no. So I used to see him, he had his own house already. He had a car, Mr. Williams. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, he had, he was set and it wasn't about like a monetary thing to say I was being superficial and you know, whatever he's set for life kind of thing, he'll take care of me. But it was more so, I mean, we could have been, you know, homeless together. Um, and he's sitting there sweeping the front of our tent and I would be content because I know he's gonna share the responsibilities of life together from from sweeping the house to, and I don't have to say something. Oh my God, I'm so tired. I come home every day. I, I deal with all the kids and this, and I come home, I used to say, no, now you're not doing anything. I've never had that problem with him. And I knew that. Um, from the get-go. And he, he laughs all the time and he tells everybody she only loves me because I clean. I, I said that a lot. <laughs> I always say in the back of my head, I say, you know, I think she like me because I clean, cook, and do all of these things. I said, I think that's why they like me. I said, how come somebody beautiful <laughs> like you like me? Come on. <laughs> so uh, I need to go back and ask uh, or one question and then I have a comment on that. So Jason, you mean to tell me your pickup line was I go and hold you know and kiss you? Yes. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it struck me right there. That day, I won't, I won't forget it. Let me tell you. We're in the back of the um of the office at the hotel, right? She's she's on the switchboard, and and we were talking, and she stood up. I think Colleen was in there. She left the room, and we were talking for a long time. And then I'm just looking at her, and at that moment was the time that I said, "Man, I'm really falling for this lady. She just she's just so nice. I mean, talking to her." And sharing these moments with her, I'm like, man, I, I, I'm really liking her. And I stood up and I said, you know, that's when it hit me. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it down and kiss you. That was like that. I guess you said that's my pickup line, but that was me saying, you know, I really, really love you, and I just really want to get more deeply involved in it than just talking to you on this level. And that's what that was. And then I'm like, oh, he's he's not what I imagine. He's a player <laughs> like the rest of them. So forget it. I knew we were wrong, God. This is it. I'm done, right? So that's why I said, like, for three weeks, he tried to take me out. And I'm like, no, uh-uh. That line was like, really? And <laughs> you that, come with something better? And that was something else. Because every time we make a plan, I say, yeah, or something. And she's like, yeah, sure. Call her. <laughs> our, our roommate says so she's not there. And she was there. <laughs> I come back to the hotel. She said she's waiting for me. She's gone already. But that one day when I came back and I saw the little red turtle parked up there, I couldn't believe it. I said something was wrong with the car. The car broke down or something. And sure enough, she was in the car waiting for me. That was like it. Then that day we went to the park and we were talking in the park from after work to about 5 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, wow. You know, just talking the whole time. It was beautiful. Uh -huh. And then the next day, after that, the next day we went to the beach and we're the same thing, talking till about four o'clock in the morning, you know? It was, even now we still talk <laughs> till in the morning. Oh, wow. yeah. So, so yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I want to take time out to say thank you for what you, you do in adopting three children um, because especially as you get older in life and you want to spend more time with each other to take on that additional responsibility and give hope to three children. I mean, thank you for that. I mean, that's just God's blessing. And like he said, you know, 
you want a time with your wife and here you go again. You love each other enough and you love children to travel this journey together. Um, so thank you for that, both of you. <laughs> and I thought you said he's not a talker, but he's definitely a talker. <laughs> I have so, to warm it up first. But when he said, pull it on and kiss you, it's like so many, for those of you not from the islands or maybe Jamaica, because I know it for Jamaica, that's a real yard man talk. I go, hey, pull it on and kiss you. So that really stuck with me right there when you said it. That's beautiful. See, catch you with that line, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you sure did, right? <laughs> so I want to ask you all, um, how do you keep the spice going? Well, we're still newlyweds. <laughs> <laughs> but you're 13 months in. Some people, the spice are already gone. <laughs> so tell us, what, what, what makes it spicy for you? Humor. And, and, and as, as, um, as they said, talking, you know, the communication, I'm just like these men happy to come home because I can't wait to talk to her. I can't wait to, to tell her what happened during the daytime, uh, what happened during my work. I work overnights, actually. So I work 1130 uh, to 730. And then I do basically what our, my second job would be road work. Okay, so I will work uh, sometimes till 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, to the afternoon. So I, I work, you know, 16, 17, 18 hour days sometimes. So it really makes me happy to come home and see her. And, uh, you know, she's usually working and now she's working from home. So her working from home has allowed us to actually see each other more. And, you know, where I would be usually asleep when she would come home from work around uh, 6.30ish in the, in the evening, I'd usually be asleep. So, I mean, when I see her, I can't wait to talk to her. I can't wait to share, you know, how my day was or my, you know, my week was or something that has happened. And, you know, we joke, we play, uh, you know, we, we mess with each other. We also, we said, you know, last night, I'm laying there in bed and I just sent a little, you know, kiss goodnight picture to him or I get pictures from him while he's working or something like that. And it's just, you know, little text messages that keep things sweet and endearing between us and things like that. And yeah. We share extracurricular activities up until, you know, March. We enjoy going dancing together. She lets me know every morning when she's awake, you know what I mean? Good morning. And I'm like, good morning, beautiful. You know, and uh, it's... It's, it's what we do. Not yeah. to mention, we play each other on words with friends quite a bit. And we <laughs> love, I love to her for her to wake up and see a huge, crazy word that I played, you know? <laughs> but we, you know, as I said, we play with each other. We, you know, we, you know, we keep it alive that way, I think. And, and, and as everyone has said, communication, we can't stop talking to each other. I mean, we love to sit for hours at a time, just jawing back and forth with each other, playing with each other, talking with each other, you know, and, and, and informing each other what's going on and letting the week out also. I mean, it's not always fun and games as, as, as everybody knows, um, you know, just being able to get the week off me sometimes. Sometimes I got to talk about what happened during the week. And especially, you know, uh, nowadays it's good to be able to come home and just, uh, and have someone be like, yeah, I know. And she really does, you know, being what she does for a living, she knows more than I do what's happening around. And so, you know, we're, we're both really in it as far as it's like, what's going on. We have the, we have the fingers on the pulse of this town, basically of Massachusetts, her being in news, me being in law enforcement, uh, you know, we can both share, you know, the good, the bad, again, the ugly. Yeah, and I can see that too. And you've all touched on communication being key. A lot of couples don't talk to each other. 
you can be in the same bed and one's on a laptop, the other one's on their phone, or you're in totally separate rooms of the house. So those are some of the keys to uh, communicating and coming home and de-stressing. You guys have really good careers that you can communicate about. So yeah. Very interesting. With hardships with our careers. I mean, last night, but he's so sweet. Like last night I was watching, you know, a program, my chick flick TV show and he sat and he enjoyed it with me. He just, he just kind of, okay. I gave him a little background and he watched my little stupid show with me. And <laughs> it's, it's our, you know, like it's a give and take. He watches his internet video things and I'm like sitting there going, yeah, okay. But I love you and I want to be in your presence. So here I am. You know? <laughs> the compromises, right? Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yes. And absolutely. We, we have our favorite binge TV shows and <laughs> Yeah. Everything comes. Go ahead. Oh, I'm no, I'm just. I was just saying. Everything merges. Everything is. If if you're doing this, if you're trying to to merge a life with somebody, you try and merge their interests also. You know, you try. You, it, I mean, even if their interests weren't like I, I was not. A, oh my goodness! The show that she watched last night. The thing about it is, she made it interesting. She informed me there was controversy behind. You know the the show. It's a reality TV show that she was watching. I don't know if we're able to say it because you know we're in, we're doing this, okay? But um, you know, it's more like something that if I go into work, I mention it. The only people who are going to understand what I'm saying, okay, are the female employees, and they're all like, "Oh my goodness, you watch that!" And they can't believe that you know that I actually enjoy and understand what's going on behind the scenes. It kind of makes me kind of proud, actually. To yeah. Hear. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, I mean, as I said, the merging of ideas, of of likes, of dislikes, even, you know. So it's that's how we're doing it. Yeah, we put the work in, we have our fun. Yeah. How about you, Pastor Williams? You know, I um, I'm definitely gonna piggyback with um the the Williams said. I think communication, um, just knowing that um. You know, I could talk to someone, you know, we play and giggle with each other, uh, look at TV together. And I know y'all said it's a grown show. I'm just going to be honest. I love the fact how sometimes she looks at me and she's undressing me with her eyes. I just, <laughs> be honest, y'all, forgive me for that, but that's just, <laughs> you know, I want y'all to think I'm a stuck up pastor. How about that? I, 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 I like what you just did. <laughs> Come on. You got the fur, and 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 I love that. And I, I and I can't be away from her too long. Uh, I was with my brothers about a couple of weeks ago. We was out of town, and they uh, asked me to come with them. And I'm starting to look at my watch. You know, I'm ready to get home to my wife. I'm I'm glad I'm with my siblings, but I'm ready to get home. You know, to her. I'm ready to get home to the one that I love. You know, I can hang around you, jokers, anytime. I need to get home. You know, to my wife and the one that I know that that's going to just um, just be there, you know, for me. And uh, don't y'all laugh at me, guys, when I say this. I know it's times. I think my wife um, smells so good. Sometimes before I go to work, I may smell her blouse. Um, so, you know, back in the day, I used to spray a little bit of perfume on my arm just to know that I could just at work just kind of sniff just to have her, you know, near me. Don't think I'm weird, y'all, but that's just me. Or sometimes when I'm at my desk, I will pull up her picture and 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 look at her picture, you know, throughout the day. Because to me, I have married the most beautiful woman in the world, yeah. and, and that's that's just where mm -hmm. I have to be. I got to, you know, I just hold on to a tight, you know, and, and everything. So that's, you know, I think that's what had kept us the spark, the spicy in our marriage. Yeah, I would say definitely so, and I, I'm playful. And yes. So. <laughs> So I like to just play around with them and, and joke around just to make them laugh, you know, and we like to just have fun and uh, he loves pictures. So I love finding something interesting that he that that was that he would enjoy looking at if I if I find like old pictures of, of somebody or something like that. And then really it's just talking with him because he loves to talk. <laughs> he really does. And but uh, it's just always good. Just have him come home and just enjoy a nice conversation and just to see how his day has been. And one of our things we've been doing lately just to um just to relax because we really can't 
go too many places. We haven't, we have, we have out a little bit, but we've really been staying in. But just finding, like the um, Williams was saying, and finding shows to binge off of. <laughs> we've really been getting into that. Yes. And so we're like up on the shows. And, and there's one particular show we were looking at. And so I said, oh, you got to catch, I got, you got to catch up. Because <laughs> it's such a good show. But just to have something, even in the season we in, because you can't really go out, out. But just to have something that we still can do and have fun and enjoy such a company and just laugh and just be ourselves. And I think that's what's important, just to relax and just be around someone you just love and enjoy their company and can't wait to see them and just have fun. I want to share this right quick. I remember one time I had to go minister somewhere. We was getting dressed that morning and um, she took a towel and popped me. You know, <laughs> and I got, I don't know if you remember this. I got on the phone and started making a phone call. And she was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to call somebody to replace me to preach today. Cause we can have our own worship right here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, like I said, the playfulness. It's like, look, I can go preach later. Let's, let's, let's start with and let's, uh, whatever you start, I'm about ready to finish that. <laughs> so did you find someone to replace you? <laughs> No, I had, she told me go ahead and get dressed and get going because I had to do the Lord's work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I, you start with him, you go finish. I'm gonna finish. So I preach one of the fastest sermons you will ever believe that Sunday. <laughs> I'm ready to get home. <laughs> <laughs> so Mrs. Williams, do you really undress him with your eyes, like he said? Yeah, I I, I like to mess with him a lot. I really do. And I think it's important just to let your mate know that he's still attractive to me, that he's still sexy, he has that appeal and attractiveness. And it, I think that you may need to just know it, not just through your words, but just do it, you know? And yeah. You have to discover that way to communicate that to your mate. And so over the, that's been for 29 years, that's what I've discovered. But I've, I've been like that since the beginning. I yeah, she always flirt with me. And play. Yeah, that's why we have to hurry <laughs> and finish this call so I can finish. I'm just <laughs> so, <laughs> so marriage isn't always perfect, and I think this one's geared to the, our, our tenure of married people. Um, it's not always easy. You're going to have disagreements, and you're going to make up. Uh, you may have slept in the other room. You may have slept on the sofa. Um, how do you handle your arguments, you know, because I think it makes a huge difference what you say to the person in anger um, as a way to recover that respect for each other. So tell us what you do, what are some of the steps you do? Have you ever slept on the sofa or the other room because you were just so angry? <laughs> yes, to all the above. All the above. Yep. <laughs> that is for sure. I even built a room one time. No, I'm, I'm just playing. <laughs> no. but, no, I mean, you do have the, you do have the, we call it uh, intense fellowship. Intense fellowship, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have those disagreements. And um, one thing about marriage and, and what's, what's great about it is that you grow. You know, every experience is a learning experience. And so, um, just the fact that we are not perfect, and trust me, your spouse is going to say something to you, or something's going to go on that you're just not going to agree with. And it's just important to try to go through, uh, to try to talk it out and to communicate with one another. And the yelling, um, it, sometimes ignoring each other is not going to solve it. You know, sometimes you really just have to deal with it. And so um, when times get tough, I mean, if you can't talk and you need to take a break, I mean, I would suggest to do so for things don't get, you know, out of hand, but you need to know how to be angry and still deal with what's going on, you know, in a civilized way, in a way that you, you're talking to your spouse instead of talking at them. And there's a difference, you know, um, with, with when, when you communicate, when, you, when a person is upset. Because sometimes if you're upset and you're just talking at the person, you're really not getting through. Oh, that wall you know, a wall is up. Mm -hmm. And so you really need to get to a place where you can communicate with one another. And that means one person is talking and the other person is listening. 
and everything. And so, and for some people that, that takes time. It's a, it's a, mature, a maturity type thing, you know, but to say that you're not gonna argue and you just, everything is hokey dokey and we, you know, we solve our problems, like, you know, no. You know, uh, we're human, so, you know, we have bad days, rough, rough spots. And uh, sometimes you don't feel like you, you're in a phone. You don't feel like talking. And when you come home, you can feel that phone. And you try to lighten things up. But at the end of the day, you know, you have each other. And um, you just have to know how to love each other uh, through those difficult times. And I always say this, there, there were times that I didn't like my husband. <laughs> That's big. I literally didn't like to love him, but I was so upset as I had that moment I didn't like him. And um some people are like that. That's that's just being real. Sometimes you 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 can be so upset that at the moment I'm not liking you right now. But you have to be able to come back and, and work through that. And um mm -hmm. we talk to a lot of couples and you know, some couples are like that, they don't know how to communicate because they're not liking each other. And you have to know how to get beyond that where you can begin to like your husband, but we're always going to love each other. I've always loved my husband, but yes, there have been times we didn't like each other, you know, and as you continue to grow in your marriage, and I know I have, we got our young couple here, but it, it can be, it can get to that point sometimes. It really can. And those are the times that you have to just really um, go down, kind of look at yourself and see what, what have you contributed to make this, well, how, how did we get here, you know, as far as where the situation may be? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things we teach couples, are you willing to move forward in your marriage even if you don't get I'm sorry from the other spouse? Yeah. Are you still willing to move forward? You know, are you willing to, sometimes it's been in our relationship that, it, hey, I, I just go ahead and say I'm sorry, even though I may not have, start the argument or whatever, but if that's gonna make us start to talk again, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm sorry. And I also believe you have to set the atmosphere that when you are talking, that of course that the other person talk, but don't already have in your head when you're ready to respond, you know, mm -hmm. to her answer or to her need, just let her talk, mm -hmm. you know, because we're easy want to try to solve, as men, we want to just solve your problem. We want to, yeah. and sometimes when women they don't even want you to solve their problem, they just want you to listen to them. Right, and I was going to say, that's where, where our biggest is. We're going to get in an argument is because you're not listening to me. You're trying to solve mm -hmm. my problem. Yeah. And that could be kind of hurtful over time because you just want, you know, he, he's a problem solver. And, and, and I learned that men have a tendency to, to be that way by maybe by nature, if you're hurting or if there's something going on with you as a woman, they want to solve it. And at, the, at that time, you just really want him to just listen, you know? Yeah. So he had to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. And he still, yeah, he got, he's got better. He got better. He got better. <laughs> but, you know, when you just be someone to just listen to you and not give necessary a opinion or feel like um, you're trying to solve it for me. Just give me, just let me talk and you vent, you know, what have you. And so uh, if I say you're going to get into a fallout, it's because I'm feeling like you know, I'm not being, heard not being heard. And he's not listening. He's right. just trying to solve everything and move on to the next problem to solve. And that could be, you know, that could be tough on a marriage. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So Jess and Jason, and Jason, what about you guys? How do you resolve those times when you may have to sleep on the sofa or in another room? Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, that culture. <laughs> I think we're losing you through connectivity here. I mean, I've been for years. Sometimes you have to take the initiative because women, I mean, just always taking the initiative. You know, sometimes guys are very cool. We are dead stock. <laughs> right. You know, but you, 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 I don't know. If you love somebody, you can, if you love her, you're going to really make the effort and try to make things right and just, hey, I have to say, I'm sorry. You know, talk about it whatever, send some flowers, write a note, do something, you know, you don't, you can't live like that, that's just not right, you know, 
And mm -hmm. the thing is too that I find, um, I guess after this long, and I don't know if it's like that for everybody, but you get used to each other. And I mean, we went through a really rough patch for a couple of years. We're actually just getting out of it. And it was that not feeling loved anymore. Like the flowers aren't as regular as the cards. And I'm like, oh, he knows what I like. He knows I like random flowers. They don't have to be my birthday or Mother's Day, a card for no reason. Why did this stop? Like where, what happened? Um, what did I do? Is it my fault? Is it because, you know, I'm, I'm so busy because my schedule is like jam packed between the kids and their activities and outreach and everything that's going on. Um, and I love my um, social media, you know, um, more so to kind of reach the people I feel like on a positive impact. You know that, Don, I'm always trying to to, to help people um, with that platform and then with real estate. So I had to kind of step back. Um, I mean, we probably went through it for a couple of years and I didn't realize how rough it was because he never, he doesn't really communicate. Like he's always okay from day one. Jason, you know, Jason already is always just everything cool, everything cool. I mean, you could be in the freaking middle of a hurricane and somebody calling you to see if you're all right and invites everything cool and your house blowing off the roof, gone and everything. So I'm like, it's not okay <laughs> if somebody call you and say, if you're all right, you don't have to cry, but you can't tell them, no, I'm not all right. I'm going through a hard time. Help me. I need somebody on the outside of my four walls. Um, and he, that's one thing he doesn't know how to reach out. And me, I'm always reaching out because I'm very blessed um, in my circle. And then, of course, adding his family to our mix, um, having, you know, a lot of people in our village. Like, I'm very blessed with my friends I've been in my life for 20 plus years. I mean, most of my friends I've known my whole life are um, very few was recent. And um, so I had to really take a step back and say, okay, you know what? He hasn't changed. Maybe he's not given as much, but what am I doing that's causing him to now start to feel sad where he doesn't want to make an effort anymore? Something is wrong because he's always happy. Why is he sad now and come to find out you know it's been building up to that that where's my wife she's all she's out there as he says trying to save the world not my words um when there's no time for him you know there's no time in the morning for the quick text message or the phone call because i'm running i got this meeting that meeting i'm doing this this and that and um we literally just like had to just break down run away for four days together um Thank God we have, you know, my mom is here. She can help take care of the kids. And we literally just got away for four days. And honestly, it was our first date in probably a year. I mean, that's how busy our life is. Um, and it, I mean, it was like two new people going out together. It was amazing. It was refreshing. It opened my eyes. And I let my walls down. I let my guard down. And I just, you know, I just... I said, God, just let, teach me to let go because I'm a control freak. I like to, everything's always organized and on time and this and that. And, you know, I just had to let it all go and say, you know what, let him guide us now. Let's get back to where we started again. Um, and we've been on this new journey together for um, probably a little over a month. And it feels like the beginning again. Um, and I know we'll have our times, but he he has grown now to know that he needs to step up a certain way. And I'm backing off, realizing I don't have to be out there doing every single project that he needs me to. Um, try to put my phone away when he comes home from work. You know, Facebook going to be there. Friends are going to be there. Um, if somebody calls me and I know somebody going through something, I don't have to take the call at this moment. Let me give him my time. Whereas before, if somebody needs me, I'm there. And I'm thinking, oh, it's my husband. Am, am I right? And I'm not looking that he has needs because he's always saying he's okay he's okay so we're now growing and moving on to that next phase in our life and i guess this was this is the start of the next 25 years i don't know <laughs> you go through the first and then you're like people say oh you grow apart at this phase in your life and in marriage because you're different people now and we are different now and we had to learn who we are now and is it worth it to push through and stick it out um, or are we going to get up and start over again with somebody else? I'm like, heck no, I'm not going to try to learn somebody all over again and them learn me. And I'm like, no, we're just, we're going to make it work, you know, and let's start by dating each other again. We said that we literally said, okay, you're sleeping on the couch and we're going to start dating again, like day one. And that's what we started doing. Um, and you know, like I said, it's just about give and take and communication. And it really touched me when he sent me that, um, 
that invitation in the mail to go on a date with him. I was like, I was so touched. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like the old Jay, you know? And it was just like, wow, like he does, he does really want to stick it out. He does really want to be here. And I'm like, yes, you know? And it just kind of renewed that faith. And then I felt the sparks again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they're still there. Okay, I got this, we can do this, you know? And um, and we're, we're just, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy and you throw kids in the mix and everybody's going through everything. And, you know, you got COVID in the mix and, um, you know, I had lost my job, he got cut back. So you're dealing with financial, you know, drama and just life and all this extra stuff on top of what you already have to deal with day to day. And it's, it's, not, it's not easy. But the, the main thing is, like he said, um, just communication, just talk. Don't go to bed angry, you know, just talk about it, but talk respectfully to each other. Because we, we've never had an argument where we yell at each other, ever. Don't fight. So if I sit here and I'm talking and I'm loud, I'm yelling at myself because he ain't fighting. Okay, so I'm like, are you in there? Hello? <laughs> Can you say something? Raise your voice something? You know? So a lot of, I mean, we've never had an, we've never had an argument. So um, I mean, in, in one sense, it's a, it's a, it's a blessing, but on the other side, I'm like, do you, do you realize that I'm upset right now? <laughs> you know, can you respond like something? So, you know, now it's like, okay, I, I'm, I don't raise my voice. I respect him that he's an individual person himself. He matters. He's important. I don't need to escalate to this level. Um, Tell him how I feel so he knows how to treat me and how to react rather than like like Mrs. Williams was saying, rather than barking at him and saying, you know, like, oh, he doesn't understand. I'm walking away when I'm not communicating to him, you know, what my needs are. Um, and I think also back to what you're saying, what keeps the spark alive, like even just watching him like give the baby a bath, like it just warms my heart and those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like, wow, like I'm so blessed because a lot of my friends don't have that, that are married. You know, they do everything for their spouse and their spouse don't even go in the kitchen and they bring them food, breakfast, lunch and dinner. They're sitting at the table waiting that the spouse don't get up and clean up after dinner and meals. And I'm just like, I go to their house. I'm like, oh, no, girl. Mm -mm. You know, and I don't think the husband's like me coming there because, you know, I'm trying to train these women. Right. <laughs> I'm like, no, this is not, not, this is not right. So needless to say, I'm gonna have very, two, we're going to have two very independent females going out in the world. I'm sorry for any man that dates them, but I'm their mama, so I apologize in advance. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's just a give and take. It really is. And also not um, letting the kids see and hear whatever's going on with you. Like anything we've ever had, the kids never knew there was ever anything, any issues with us. Um, it was always away from them so that they didn't grow up with that, you know, anything thinking, oh, my parents don't like each other. And, and we never really went through a phase where we didn't like each other, but just, you know, oh, what's going on? Oh, like they see so much divorce and everything in school and the media and everything that's just thrown at them. They think these, this generation of kids thinks marriage is, that's the yeah, out. That's exactly. not. That's not the new yeah. thing. You don't need to get married. Nobody gets married anymore. Everybody get divorced. So, um, you have to show them that it's worth fighting for. So, therefore, we keep our personal business away from them. So they don't have to wonder: Is is this gonna last? Is something wrong? Are my parents gonna split up? Um, because that's not necessary to involve them in that. Um, so you know, we just. If we just try our best. It's really just one day at a time, and you really have to put God in the center of everything. Um, I know that's what's gotten us through all these years. Because if we did not have that faith and um, to go through, I don't, I don't think we would have made it. Because you know, we're I always said to the kids, we're, we're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Because if you have that worldly mindset and you're focused on everything of the world and not of yourself um, and that love that that he joined together, you're not going to make it because there's nothing out in the world that's promised. And at the end of the day, when you come home and you have each other through all of it, that makes everything bearable. Once you step out that door, you're like, you have your armor on and you're ready to fight it because you can't go out there and be strong and you can come home and cry and hold each other through it. So, um, it's not easy, but we're here. And like I said, we're ready for the next 20 some years and, you know, 
We'll go from there with it. <laughs> That's right. The mere fact that you're on the show, because I can always send it to you, or you can find it on YouTube. <laughs> um, but I can see how difficult it is, Jason, if, if, if Jess is arguing with you and you're not even answering back. I mean, that's just her personality, but wow. Like she said, she's like, are you in there? Are you hearing me? But at the same time, I think with Jess's personality, should you match her level, then that's where the argument comes to. So I can see why it doesn't happen, but man, it takes a really different kind of guy to have that mindset. What is it about you that, is it just who you are that you're just peaceful? You don't allow anyone into that space to get you that upset? Yes, that's, that's exactly how I am, you know? I mean, you, um, if you understand things, I mean, people go through things and all of that, but you as an individual, me personally, I really not gonna make anything bother me. I, try, I really not gonna make anything bother me. And that's just the bottom line. I mean, there, you know, there are ways to deal with things. I don't think there's an, I mean, of course there are instances that you have to clear up and get upset, but on the, on, on the major part of it, no, you really don't have to get upset or anything. You can deal with it in things in a calm way. Yeah. And his rub is, oh, man, the picnic, them never wash up the plates in the sink. Me just wash up everything already. Why them leave one dirty plate in the sink? That's his flare up, by the way. So. <laughs> a flare up by the small thing that don't matter. <laughs> He wants a clean sink. So, but Jessica, you 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 took us, uh, you know, to to the reality of happily married couples. Um, about that, it's not always pretty. There are times you have to restart, reset. And one of the things that you did was you evaluated yourself. A lot of people don't do that. Like we blame the other person a lot. Um, and we don't look at what we did to contribute to whatever the situation is. So that that's amazing that you did that after all these years and with your hectic lifestyle um, in order to refocus and in order to continue to the love and the commitment that you made to Jason as well. So I'm, I know you guys enjoyed that four-day getaway from the kids and the mm -hmm. heck. And then we got away again two weeks later for two days for our anniversary. So we were like, yes. <laughs> to do it we felt like we won the lottery and we were at the beach. So. <laughs> yeah, and that postcard in the mail just to go on a date and you opening it. That's so romantic after all these years. So see, I'm so excited going on there. <laughs> Let's talk about the in-laws. Anyone has in-laws that just um, rub you the wrong way, male or female? And how do you handle that? Do you get along with your in-laws? Is your mom on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who's going to go first? <laughs> I think Sean's going first. <laughs> go ahead, Sean. Uh, I, was, I was saying, unfortunately, her parents have passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I had gotten to know them. Um, but uh, she has my parents who are pretty much very similar, mm -hmm. you know, and, and re, you know, react and treat her just like, you know, she would expect, uh, you know, she 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 was happy to have my parents being both alive and being the way they are, you know, uh, retired people. Uh, right now, my daughter, I have twin daughters, and they go to school near. Uh, their school is closer uh, from from their house to, from to uh, than where we live. Okay, so they live with my they live with my parents. Um, they're twenty years old, twin girls going to, going to college right now. They're doing the online learning thing. Uh, I I have an older uh, daughter who's uh, twenty six, and you know she's doing her own thing. And they absolutely love having my daughters there with them right now. Um, so right now we're empty nesters, mm -hmm. and you know and. 
unfortunately, I have to stay away from my parents because I'm exposed to, to the public a lot. And, you know, I, I, I call them. And when I come to visit, I have to stand out in the front yard. I don't go inside the house because I don't want to contaminate the house. I don't want to possibly, you know, contaminate them, uh, you know, because I get exposed to people all the time. Who knows when someone might pass something to me? I don't want to pass anything to them. I, I recently had a scare. I had a, uh, a stomach flu, a stomach bug, a regular seasonal stomach bug. And my first couple of days were the scariest thing in the world because here I am with a fever thinking, oh gosh, uh, you know, 49 years old catching this. I mean, we had, uh, I, I, there was a neighboring um, uh, Boston police had a 50 year old officer pass away from COVID. So, I mean, this is on my mind and uh, you know, I, I I don't want to pass it on to my parents and I, I can't wait to the day where I'm able to give my mom a big old hug, my father a big old hug. And, you know, I think she's the same way right now. Yeah. I met his parents and we got along so well. I, you know, afterwards I told him, I said, being with your parents is like being with my family. And I felt like, you know, I hit the lottery because I, I don't have my parents. And I was just like, Oh, well, great. I'm comfortable. I'm home. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, no in-law problems at all. Yeah, His dad's a sweetheart. We get along. We go back and forth with each other. It's great. <laughs> I mean, the way we grew up. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the, we grew up not too far away from each other. We have been in each other's bubble many times throughout our adult history, even. Um, many times, like... Uh, uh, I, I've run into her. I, I remember seeing her at one point in a, in a, a store. Where I live, there aren't too many very tall, light-skinned, beautiful black women. All right, so when you see one, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have I had seen her many numerous times, and at the time, I couldn't be in a relationship with her. I couldn't talk to her at the time, um, but. Um, this is the reason why, you know, she's comfortable around my parents because we came from kind of like almost the same kind of background and we lived not that far from each other. We had a, basically only a town separating us at one point, you know, from when we were growing up. So, you know, it's not when she, when she's with my parents, it's very familiar to her more. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sorry for your loss, Nicole. And I'm yeah. also happy to hear that you found comfort with your husband's family, because if it was the opposite, wow, that would have yeah. been interesting for you. <laughs> so kudos to having great parents, it makes a difference. And a lot of us wake up every day with a scratchy throat or something going on, we're like, oh no, hopefully it's mm -hmm. not COVID. So yeah, I think, you know, we're all doing what we can to take care of ourselves and take care of the public. Um, and, you know, prayers and just everyone doing their part to get through COVID-19 safely and healthy as much as possible. And then, so we can have those hugs again and those, yeah gatherings and enjoying life more but it's good that we have couples that are behind closed doors still loving each other because i'm sure a lot of couples are not loving each other they're being challenged now mm -hmm. and forced into confinement to get along with each other and you know very interesting so i'm glad we're having a show with happily married couples who are setting the toast because i'm learning a lot from you guys i mean you you gentlemen on the show tonight are so respectful you you've hit on so many key points about communication trust respect it, it's not always you know fine and dandy but it's playful and you know, we still need to undress our men with our eyes and make them feel good and all. So single women are getting some tips that are watching the show. And people on the verge of divorce may be watching this show saying, you know what, my husband or my wife, maybe they're not that bad and they're going to stick it through. Because like Jess said, I don't want to start with someone else. I don't want to learn their habits. I love my husband's habits because, you know, he may leave the toilet seat up, but I'll just put it down if that's the only thing wrong in right. our relationship, right? <laughs> there's got to be a freedom of speech within with 
within a married couple. He never closes the drawers and the doors all the way. And it's like, I walk behind him all the time, closet <laughs> doors and, and, and you know, the, the chest of drawers, drawers, and that's okay. <laughs> that's his flaw that drives me crazy. That's okay. <laughs> but I am trying. I'm not just a lot. I'm just not, I'm not just saying, well, that's just me and you'll have to do, no. You know, the, you know, I'm, I'm going to run into these things that I don't realize are bothersome. You know, there's things about me that are bothersome. That's just, that's just the way it is. Okay. I mean, we all have our habits. We all, we, each, we, we both have our issues. We both have our little things that the other one's like about. Okay. But so I think about that. What, what is a habit Nicole has that you want her to know she needs to work on? She's so gassy. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. I am so joking. <laughs> Remember? Playing. Playing. Ha ha. So I'm glad I'm gassy. I, I, really? Oh really? I got to tell you something. And I'm not just blowing smoke here. Um, I have, unlike the other couples here, okay, unlike the Beckfords and the Williams, um, her and I have not had 21 or 20 years or 30 years together i mean you know we 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 have had numerous people before we met each other we're respectful of that we have we are thankful for those people because we have learned from them so when i got with her i, I made no compromises when i married her there were no compromises mm -hmm. this is a person i this is my second marriage i learned from the first marriage that marriage is no joke that when you marry someone, you gotta you, you gotta do go for the best thing, go for your best for one, and then do your best while you're in it. Well, I'm lucky for one that I got someone as compatible as I have gotten. I mean, uh, the other two couples ha had had to work with each other for so long, but you know because we have had other you know relationships and it were, we were able to hone our skills and hone our edge basically, you know, in a different way. Okay. These two, these other two couples have honed their edges with each other. I'm sure their edges are sharp as all get out. Okay. We had to do it a different way. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's taught us different in, in different ways on how to, you know, on what to look for in a life partner, you know, and, and when we find our life partner, what are we gonna want? And how are we gonna deal with, you know, you know, our life partner? Right. I made no compromises. I, I have not, I, I can't really say there's something that really bothers me about her. I just can't. I know there's stuff she can say for doggone sure. Okay. <laughs> but I'm kind of I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you. You're good. And as I said, we are newlyweds. We understand that we are newlyweds. Even though we have been po previously married and everything like that, it's just that her and I both were not looking to do this. We were not looking to get married. But when we, we so I know we have said to each other in our, to ourselves that when we find that one person, I am not going to let that go. This is what this is. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And I can certainly understand that. I think the person you are today is a more mature individual, whether you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s or possibly 70s, finding love. Um, you're just different than you were in your 20s. Um, and, and so your expectations are a lot different. Your yeah. thought processes. When we look back at our relationships, we say, wow, how was I with that person? How did I make that decision? Because you're so different. You didn't grow together, which is why you're, you're, you end that relationship, whether it's a divorce or just a partnership. So I can definitely relate. And we certainly wish you both the best in, in your new marriage and glad that you found each other as well. Thank you. And you're welcome. Pastor William, so tell us what bugs you about your husband or wife? Why it drives you crazy? <laughs> well, it may not drive me crazy. Um, I'm so used to sleeping for years. I've slept on the right side of the bed. And just recently, she wanted to change it up because that side of the bed is better for her. And um, I say for like the first 
three months, I couldn't sleep. I just tossing and turning. I'm used to, I love to sleep by the window. That, that's, just, that's always been me. I love to sleep by the window. And, and so we decided to switch after 30 plus years. You can you imagine yeah. me even on this same side of the bed? So now I'm on a different side and like I'm always hanging on the edge of the bed. Like I don't fully get in the bed because it's not my spot, you know? And we recently had to go out of town and and we got to the hotel and she gave me the side of the bed that's to the window. Man, I slept like a baby, you know. And, and, <laughs> you know, and so it is, but I think that's the that's the only thing um uh that that I, I, I may have. And that's a small thing that you know but well, it's interesting he said about sleeping in the bed. One of the things I have with him with him sleeping is he snores. <laughs> So, <laughs> switching the different sides of the bed, I thought would help. <laughs> but I had to actually record him because he, you know, that that's I didn't believe I snore. Joke, right? I didn't believe, yeah. We're talking, everybody was snoring. And I'm like, no, no, I don't. It's like he's in denial, right? And my daughter's like, yes, you do, Dad. Yeah. So I recorded him. And it was one night I was sleeping so good. He, and he woke me up in the middle of the night with this snore. <laughs> so I recorded him. <laughs> When he woke up the next morning, he, same thing, he denied it. I said, this is you. He's like, this is how loud I sound? I was like, yes, and you're in my ear. Have you, ever, you ever watched the Flintstones when Fred used to snore in the rooftop? That's me. I, that, that, I mean, she recorded that I could it's, deny. It's not a constant snore, but it goes in and out. So, yeah. <laughs> so I do the mud. Oh, I get nudge all night. Nudge, punch. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> on. Yeah, so he, he even told me one time, why don't you get some earplugs? Yeah, that's what I told him. Get some earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she recorded you and you heard yourself snoring, so now you can't deny it. It's it, it, it actually gotten better since he's hurt himself. It's like he tried to control it. Okay, no. <laughs> and how about the backwards? Anything that annoys you about your partner? Um, he he corrected it. Um, he had a mustache that was very uh, wild, and every time I kiss him, it would go up my nose. And I'm like, I'm not going to kiss him anymore. And I can't deal with it. It's like it's not romantic. And the other day he shaved and I didn't notice. And he's like, you don't even notice him he's shaving mustache on the hair, not going up your nose anymore. And I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, look. After like what, 10 years of the mustache annoying the heck out of me. And he shaves it and I didn't notice. So I'm sure it made him sad. But pretty, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't really, I mean, he's very peaceful with, you know, a lot of stuff. So there's not really anything um, that, I think annoys me. I think he realizes if he's getting under my skin, he corrects the behavior very fast. <laughs> you know, and um, so straighten up or <laughs> get the coach. <laughs> you know, so I mean, he's you know, I don't, we don't really have any problems. I probably annoy the heck out of him for a lot of stuff. I'm ready to hear his conversation. You can speak honestly, okay? Um, <laughs> but I really don't have, um, you know any any issues with him um you know with that not at this phase in our life maybe early on and i don't really remember them but not not really at this point so how about you for me, Jason? For me i mean there are things but they're they really don't mean anything you know really like what like <laughs> leaving the pot cover off off the um, off of the stuff like the rice or whatever uh, not me. That's the kid. No, that's you know how much people come and eat after I cook? <laughs> it's like eight people in the house, but I get the blame for leaving the pot cover off, right? <laughs> that really? How you know it was me? Did you record me? Did you? Oh, see yeah. Me? Let me Did show you. Did you see me go yeah. and <laughs> after I said the tribe and then I didn't put it back on? <laughs> to put a camera in the kitchen next to us. So I want to touch on something like 
I, I looked up divorce and some of the contributors for that, and it's lack of commitment, infidelity, conflict, arguing, domestic violence, and substance abuse came up at some of the top ones. So obviously, you three lovely couples have stuck through beautiful marriages um, in, in the case of the pastor Williams and, and the Beckfords, you know, you long commitment to each other, the challenges of life, um, but you still love and have fun with each other. And that's amazing and refreshing to see, especially for us all single people seeing it. And I know a lot of single people hope that they find someone that they can commit to that can still laugh with them, still have fun with them, and that they see themselves with forever, as long as forever is. And for a newlyweds, you know, the maturity at this stage in your life, having gone through your personal journey, your divorces, and to find love, you're giving hope to people in their 40s, 50s that see that to say there is maturity, there is love. And Nicole, I must say thank you because this is your second time on the Caribbean Edge. And so you have to check out a previous episode about um, breast cancer awareness where she shared her journey there with the Caribbean Edge viewers as well. We want to thank all the viewers that, wow, I, for, I almost forgot, that have tuned in and are just saying a lot of wonderful things <laughs> on here. People saying, welcome all beautiful couples. A lot of people saying hello to couples they know. Um, Michelle Hussein from Atlanta said, marriage is like construction. You have to work at it daily and communication is the trust is, is the key. And I know she's been married for 20 something plus years as well. And CB Dub said, Jessica is so lovely. Blessings to you, all of you. Um, Christopher Fabry says, Justin, Jason, love seeing you all. So quite a few people, and I'm sure you guys will go back on and respond to a lot of the viewers that have made comments tonight. So any parting words, any advice, that you would like to share with our viewers. Now is the time as we wrap up. So we'll start with our newlywed, Williams. Anything you wanna to say to the viewers that tuned in tonight that will share this episode as well about love and marriage? Well, one of the things I've always believed in is whatever it took for me to get this woman to love me, okay? Uh, is what I'm going to keep doing and keep inventing to try and keep her interested. So I'm not going to rest on my laurels. I don't, I'm not going to say this is the best you got. No, I'm trying to give her my best on a daily basis, Good. you know, um, and trying to make her laugh in different ways and trying to, and especially when this COVID lifts, um, we're going to try and, and do new things together, things that we've never done before. We've already started. And I'll say, you know, when you're looking for that person, you want somebody who's worth the work. And it's not hard work on a daily basis as much as I want to do for him. And I know he'll do for me. And it is a give and take 100% between the two of us. Maybe I give, you know, 80% one day. And that's fine, because he's making up my other 20% that, you know, I don't have or something like that. But we are constantly giving to each other. So there's never an, an imbalance. And just like Jason, if someone wears a cook, the other person wants to clean up behind them. Yeah. It's just an automatic thing. You know, it's, it's, it's not just letting someone take all responsibility. No, you say, what responsibility can I have that you're, you're, you're taking on? You know, even if she decides to take on something big, how can I help with this big thing? You know, how can I, how can I be, uh, your backbone? How can I be the tires of your car that you're running down the road? You know, uh, as far as like what you're trying to do, you know, how can I help? And that's, 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 I think one of the biggest things is taking on responsibilities that maybe you didn't have before, taking on half the responsibilities, taking on as much responsibility as this person will allow. You know, that's one of the things I think is huge. Yeah. And I think if you if you share the responsibilities as well, it allows you to get to bed quicker together too. Mm -hmm. Because if you allow her or him to do it by themselves, by the time they get in bed to have any quality time together, they're too tired. 
So it's in your best interest to, to help. So kudos to the guys and the women that are helping too. How about you, Mr. and Mrs. Beckberger? Um, I would say uh, from a woman's perspective, wife, girlfriend, fiance, whatever it may be, um, from a women's, woman's perspective, we um, are very selfish by nature. We always want everything, you know, our way. Um, a lot of times we just want the guy to conform. And, you know, we have that motto, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Um, and, you know, I jokingly say that sometimes, but I don't mean it because I want him to be happy and I want him to feel loved at home and I want him to feel that he's wanted um, and all of those good things that come along with it. Um, and it took a while. I mean, like I said, I just went through that self-discovery of, OK, what am I doing wrong um, and how can I fix it? Um, and just kind of just letting go and just living in the moment one day at a time, because life itself is filled with stress. Um, as soon as you walk out that door, you know, and even within your home from phone calls, from, you know, fights with, you know, families on either side and which, you know, we don't really deal with that a lot anyway. But generally speaking out there, a lot of people deal with a lot of that in relationships. You have so many people that are involved in his life, your life, and now you've come together and, you know, you've created this huge world of people that you both know that are now a part of your world. Um, and a lot of times they can come into your relationship and uh, essentially take over and, you know, cause problems. So it's really about looking out for each other, making sure nobody gets into your world, into your house, into your mind, into your heart, and makes you look at your significant other um, any different than you looked at him from the day you first felt butterflies and fell in love. Um, it's about just, just sometimes, a lot of times, just letting go, just letting go of the petty stuff, communicating. Um, don't go to sleep angry because you're going to wake up angry. It doesn't matter how you try to let it go. You're just going to wake up upset. And before you know, that carries on to days, weeks, months, um, and in some cases, years and leads to divorce. You know, it's just a lot of inner baggage and anger that's 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 inside so um and women unplug okay unplug your social media don't answer your friends when they call in you sometimes i mean i that was a big struggle for me because i'm a very social person jason's okay being home and never going anywhere i'm a very very <laughs> social person um i've always been like that um and as i said i have a very large circle i'm very blessed with a lot of um, sisters in my life. Um, they're my sisters. I don't have friends. I have sisters. And um, I have recently, like I said, I have had to learn to unplug. And I catch myself still now. I mean, this is very recent. Like, I'm still trying, okay? Some days I'm not that great. Um, but I'll see that he's kind of moping around or like in and out of the room. And I just notice I'm on the couch on the phone. I'm like, okay, he's home. Let me just put the phone down. Whatever is there can wait because my responsibility is within these walls as a wife and as a mother. So ultimately, this this is what I need to have on point first before reaching out to anybody out there, to, to my friends that are in need. Obviously, if it's an emergency, that's a different situation. Um, but, you know, learning to do that and not just it's all about me. And then, you know, coming into his world, what makes him happy? You know, what besides him just... Um, sitting down and watching a chick flick, like, like um, you know, like Mrs. Williams said, because he knows that makes me happy. Does he really necessarily like a chick flick? No, but sometimes he cries, so I know he's in the moment with me. So, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm fine. I'm like, you like that movie, didn't you? He's like, boy, you really know how to pick those movies, don't you? I'm like, I got you this time. I told you. But um, also, you know, doing what he likes to do, which is just, he just likes to sit and talk, you know? in quiet like we don't have a lot of quiet in our house our house is awake at like 5 a.m and until 7 p.m at night you know we got it's loud it's very loud so there's not a lot of room for him um in you know one-on-one -on -one and and in the mix and so i'm trying really hard and i and i just i just sell all women out there just give your man your time because that will that will allow your relationship to flourish beyond what you could ever imagine um, and don't always make it about you. Don't always make it about you. We don't have to be selfish women. I know by nature, that's how we are. Um, but you don't regret 
the woman he fell in love with because she disappeared somewhere along the way. So you have to kind of figure out who you were then. Yes, you've grown and you've matured since then, um, but who the mature you is at this point in your life, along with the loving, sweet um, person that he fell in love with. I think we kind of lost just there. And you Can you guys hear us? We lost the feed, it looks like. Yeah, I can hear you though. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Um yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it back. Hello? Yeah. So for me, triple C, Communi communicate, compromise, and just come together. <laughs> Women are from Mars, are from Venus, men are from Mars, but you just have to compromise. That's all. Come together, compromise. And guys, make sure you just look into how, how, you, how your wife feels, how your woman feels, and just see what her needs are. You know, If you love yourself, you love her, and you love others. So you'll make that change and do the best you can do. That's all. Oh, <laughs> and I can see the love that you guys have just from everyone's body language on this show too. Everyone's like all cuddled up, you know, so very nice to see you, trust me, checking it out. But, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about what Jess said, you know, it's as I'm listening and I'm thinking about it, just for a lot of us independent single women, and maybe Nicole can relate, I'm not sure. Um, but when you're single for a long time and you develop certain habits, like you're the social butterfly, you go everywhere, you're on social media. My kids remind me how often I'm on the phone. I'm involved in sports. I'll be gone for three, four hours playing volleyball at a time. And I'm like, how does someone fit into that world? And what Jason just said, it's a compromise and everything else. So very interesting the way for all the single people listening and married couples too, but for the singles, how we will have to change, how we will have to compromise. And that's going to be very hard um, for people that have been single for a long time, unless you meet that person that you can just love, respect, find that sexually appealing, attractive, everything is good then it makes it a lot easier. Like the spices that the Williams talk about, you know, um, some of that will help along the way. So thank you for that. And of course the three C's, Jason, love them as well. So yeah, Rissy, you know, you gotta figure out your wife as well and what makes her happy and, and just do that. So I'm gonna close with uh, Pastor Williams. Um, what would you be, would be, is your final thoughts for us on love and marriage? What advice would you give us? You know, um, I would like to come from uh, the a scripture that has helped me along and I share with other marriage couples. It's, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses four through eight. And it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice in the truth. Love, it always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes and always perseveres. And it said, love never fails. And that's in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. And the last one, is 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14, it says, do everything in love. And I just think that just having that love that don't keep no record of wrong, because we can be easily right. to keep record of wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing my wife, we have learned in our marriage is that we don't, what we say, hit below the belt. Say something that you know that's gonna upset your spouse, that you know that's gonna get them angry, that you know that stuff they dealt with in the past, you know that that has hurt them. And for you or her to bring that up, that's why I mean, hit, we can't hit below the belt. And the last thing I want is, um, last thing I want to say is, don't entertain tit for tat. You know, we can get into that tit for tat. Don't, don't entertain that. And I just truly believe that marriage rocks 
and marriage work. Yes. It's not a ball and chain, mm -hmm. but marriage is a beautiful thing. Yes. That's right. <laughs> beautiful. Mrs. Williams. Yes. Well, I would I would say um, my biggest thing I like to leave is uh, <laughs> learn how to celebrate one another, the, your, the differences, because you know God made us all different, and if you are in a relationship, whether you're dating or in a marriage, um, don't try to change your spouse. Don't let that be your number one agenda. You know, you have to allow room for grace. You have to allow room uh, for your spouse to be themselves. And we need to love and just appreciate and re respect one another uh, the way we are. And believe it or not, in due time, God will be the changer. And if we could focus on that and stop um, being busy trying to change one another and just appreciate what's in front of you and just really, you know, speaking from a faith point of view, but just really just give it to God, you know, I believe it, it helps the lady, it will help your relationship and it will blossom and bloom. And the person that you have or that God has given you, you will, you will reap the fruit if you just step out of the way. And just allow God to just really work on that person. If there are, you know, any issues or things that you, you know, are concerned about or what have you, but that would be my advice on tonight. And I really Thank enjoy. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I so agree with you guys. Hitting below the belt is hard because you can't take it back. And when you love someone and you really hurt them in such a way, it, it's hard. You just lose a little bit of. I don't know, respect, trust, something along the way, depending on how deeply they, they hit you below the belt. And, and I believe as well, you know, just trying to change someone, especially if they have good habits. I always say, you know, if you meet someone and they're, you know, doing basketball, volleyball, they're going to church, they, they have something they love, then support them in that habit versus trying to change it because you should have your personal space and then come back at the end of the night and be one, right? So thank you all three beautiful, amazing co thank you. Thank you. I wish you continued success in your journey and I will certainly keep up with you guys. We hope to have a repeat with you so we see where you are five years from now. So <laughs> So keep the love alive. I don't want you on the divorce episode. I need you on the love and marriage episode. Wow. <laughs> okay. Have a good Thank night, you. all. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.